Uh, my name is Michael Bentley. Uh, I'm a design director at AI Space Factory. Uh, and I'm here at the Architecture of the Future Festival to talk about the future of housing. Um, so my company entered a competition uh, with NASA uh, in 2018 uh, to do a 3D printed habitat on Mars. Um, so this is basically uh, the idea that to get to Mars, uh, just because of the huge expense to get material off of Earth and to land on another planet, we need to find a way to build um, buildings in advance of, of, of astronauts landing. And the way to do that is using uh, autonomous construction, so construction using robots, and also uh, in situ resource utilization. So finding materials on the surface of the planet that we can use to do a 3D printed building. Um, so we called our habitat Marsha, uh, and uh, we, we, um, we, won the, we won the competition um, by being able to demonstrate uh, that we were able to print a uh, one-third scale uh, version of the habitat um, at the competition final. Uh, now for us, in terms of the future of housing on this planet, a really interesting outcome was this material we developed. Um, so NASA gave us uh, choices in terms of what we can use. Uh, concrete was one of them, uh, but we thought, you know, water is so scarce on Mars and also the atmosphere means it has a tendency to sublimate, so very difficult to control. So we thought, well, let's use uh, a biopolymer which you can create out of organic materials and mix it with a basalt fiber which you can find uh, on the surface of Mars. And so we ended up creating this thermoplastic which you basically heat uh, and press out through the printer uh, which then cools in the form of the building. We developed this um, incredible material which is actually stronger than concrete. Uh, it's also sustainable, uh, it's recyclable, uh, and it's also compostable. So at the end of the NASA print, we had this beautiful kind of 15 foot tall, uh, eight foot wide building. Uh, we thought, oh, this is sad. You know, it stood there for about six hours before they decided to knock it down. But we realized that we could actually grind it up into little pellets again and then reprint it. So that's what we're doing. We are printing an Earth version of the Mars habitat, which we've called Terra. Uh, we're doing this in Garrison, New York, uh, and people can come and stay in it next year. So we basically have a, a user experience prototype where people can uh, experience a vision uh, for a way of building uh, for the future of this planet and also get a sense of what it might be like to be in a, in a future space habitat. In terms of my history uh, in the firm and, and a bit of our history as a practice, so uh, we are almost three years old, um, but I think what's an interesting story for us is that we're uh, an architectural startup with uh, decades of experience uh, designing very tall buildings, uh, mainly in China. So the team uh, that we have, the kind of the co-founders, I think are responsible for four or five of the tens, uh, sorry, four or five of the world's uh, top ten tallest buildings. Uh, so personally, I began as an intern um, at, 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 the, at the firm where we used to work um, on, a, on a project called the Shanghai World Financial Center, and then. Finally, I worked on the Ping'an uh, Finance Center. So we have this experience of, of designing these very tall, uh, you know, skyscrapers. Um, um, to my mind, it's that they're like kind of like the Formula One cars of the architecture world. They're very expensive. They're very high performance and uh, really spectacular. Um, but we noticed that there was not really any great advance in construction technology. Um, if you look at the th three significant buildings you know, kind of 400 meters, 500 meters, and, and then the Ping An Tower is 600 meters, you know, the height goes incrementally taller, um, but there was really no change in the construction technology. It's still a concrete core, you know, composite columns made of steel uh, and reinforced concrete. Um, but what was changing was, was the kind of a, was the, the digital aspect of the building, so specifically the sensors. So in, the, in, in an early tower, let's say completed in around 2000, you have 100 sensors, 2005, 2010 maybe, you have 1,000 sensors. In a tower like Ping An, you have 10,000 sensors. Uh, and so we wanted to be a part, I think, of that, um, part, part of that challenge of integrating this new, um, this new wave of digital uh, technology into buildings and finding a way uh, for buildings to really respond in terms of their form and how they how they behave. So, so the first phase of our company, I think, we, I would describe it as um, as kind of exploring uh, the, this kind of a, uh, linking together of the digital and the physical. And you can see that in many of the projects that we did uh, in China. Um, 
And then a few, uh, as I said, a year ago, we, we, we saw the opportunity to enter the third phase of the NASA uh, Centennial Challenge for the 3D printed Mars habitat. Um, and so we entered that. I think that was a really transformative moment because when we made the decision, as I mentioned, to, to go with a thermo, uh, with a thermoplastic to do a, a 3D printed plastic at this large scale, when we looked uh, for a printing partner who could help us realize this, uh, there was nobody who really had the expertise or the ability. Um, and, and so, you know, we current, kind of turned the traditional model of uh, a designing architect partnering with, um, you know, a 3D printing company or contractor we kind of melded that together. So we, at that moment, turned ourselves into a design and build company. Uh, so when I say that we're a multi-planetary design and build agency, I can say that in all honesty because we, we, we taught ourselves to 3D print and, and now I think we're kind of pioneers of this new way of printing using, um, using sustainable materials, which, which I think really bodes well for the future of, of sustainable building uh, on planet Earth. In terms of how, how, how AI Space Factory is using data in our designs and also in the spaces we design, um, I would say that in, in terms of the design process and the actual form of the Marsha and the Terra structures, uh, the data or the, the kind of computational technology is actually more in the construction than in the design. So we're using uh, kind, of a, a, kind of a manual process to, 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 to model uh, and kind of optimize the shell or the form of the building. So, so that's using a lot of experience and I think the architect's eye and that kind of um, appreciation of the urgency of, of a human-centric uh, design approach to space, which, which, which prioritizes kind of human emotion and is sensitive to human experience. Um, I think where the computation comes in is then translating that form into something which can be understood uh, by a six axis 3D printing robot, which has to convert that into a kind of a spiraling climbing pathway uh, to basically to deposit, uh, you know, deposit the print layers to then, you know, create a form that, that is structurally sound. Um, in terms of using data inside our environments, I think that's a very interesting area of research. Uh, we do have um, sensors in our own office where we uh, are, are basically monitoring uh, the quality of the environment where we work. Um, so for example, we're monitoring CO2 levels, temperature, uh, humidity, um, and, and understanding you know, how we work um, and how that correlates to the indoor environment. Um, and then the offshoot of that is that we could look at ways that the environment, uh, using digital technologies like lighting or temperature, could actually um, make adjustments to make it more optimal, um, which is great in terms of our own office, uh, we also think that that has a great significance um, for astronauts on future space missions. Uh, so for example, if you consider that the flight to Mars, I think is, is seven or eight months long, uh, and very quickly you would lose any view of space. Uh, so you'd just be traveling in, 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 in kind of infinite darkness, you know, great views of the stars, but not much else. It would be very lonely uh, and, and very challenging, I think, for the human, for the human, um, the human beings and the, the kind of human psychology of that mission. I think at that point when you, you start to uh, use uh, you know computer uh, like visual recognition and sensors to understand the mood or the health of the astronauts and then be able to make a kind of adjustments to the environment um, you know using lighting or temperature or augmented or virtual reality. So I think that's a very interesting opportunity, uh, one that we're researching and we're, we're going to continue to kind of involve that digital and environmental aspect into the design as, as well as the construction. In terms of how AI Space Factory addresses the, uh, the kind, of, kind of a more human approach to space design, I think our building Marsha was the first time uh, where, uh, where it was uh, somebody actually proposed going vertically on the surface of a planet. I think frequently you see these like, lunar habitats and Mars houses where, where, where things are domes or caverns and, and, and uh, you know, people kind of hunker down against the elements is this kind of fear. And I think the Marsha project was the first time uh, where people actually, where, where we proposed uh, standing kind of upright in a more proud way, more of a statement of our, our kind of intentions and of, of, of human ambition that can be seen, uh, you know, really on the horizon as a real kind of statement. Um, 
that also had great benefits in terms of the efficiency of, a, of, of, of printing. So with a vertical print, uh, sorry, with a 3D print, uh, it, it's good to kind of minimize um, the kind of surface area of the foundation. And then it's very easy to go tall and then you just kind of cap it with a skylight. Um, so that's quite efficient and also a very efficient pressure, pressure vessel. Uh, and then what that also does is it creates um, spaces, I think, which are great for people to, to live in. So we have four stories in Marsha. Uh, there's kind of a lab at the bottom uh, for, for kind of missions that are, are, are coming and going from the habitat, uh, kind of a kitchen and an experimental area on the second floor, sleeping pods, and then finally under this kind of skylight oculus, which is letting in natural uh, daylight and sunlight, there's a, a space for recreation. And then each of these levels would actually have a window looking out to the horizon. And, and because you're up, you know, kind of uh, 20 meters in the air, you would have great views over the Mars landscape. So I think all that, that kind of connection of human beings uh, to each other um, and to their environment and to the natural rhythms of the, of the Mars day are all important and all things which we took, uh, took into heart when we, when we did the design. In terms of the, the, the delay of the construction industry um, taking up technology, um, I think it's many things. I think it's, it's a huge industry. I think buildings are, are hugely expensive projects with a lot of risk involved. And so there's always maybe a fear of new technologies um, when, when you know that things can be guaranteed using an older method. Um, but I think in terms of actually how the technology is used, um, you know, a building site is not the same as a factory floor. Uh, so it's very easy to say, let's create an assembly line, um, you know, to, 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 to put together Teslas uh, using robots, that's fine. But having robots arrive on a job site and then adapt to all those different parameters and unique conditions on the site, uh, be it the geometry of the site, uh, you know, the weather, um, any kind of challenges, I think that's a, I think we're understanding that, that robotics uh, and the, the sophistication of robots to, to be self-aware and to use, let's say, uh, visual recognition to understand their surroundings and their location in a kind of uh, you know, three-dimensional matrix, like still has a long way to go to make that a viable on-site technology. So I think in terms of the design industry, you know, architects are great at using uh, you know, Rhino, BIM, and, and, and bringing that to the site. In terms of that really being translated into how things are built, I think, uh, I think it's just going to take time and investment and research uh, to get there. I think we will, um, but I think it just takes it takes time.